It's not actually a dirty little secret. It's well known to people that make or design or build open baffle speakers. It's what's known as the dipole peak, and it has a big effect on the response that you're going to get, especially in the lower frequencies and right up into the, you know, the upper mid range. And what brings us about is that I had a lot of comments on my last video where I uh, did a test baffle for my new open baffle speakers and talked about the crossover and the changes I made there and the measurements that I took. And the measurements showed that there was a slight peak at around 3,800 Hertz. And I say slight because it is slight. It's, <laughs> it's, there's a, like a five decibel deviation there. And that was with the microphone very close. If I were to take the microphone and put it further out at your listening position, you could say someone's normal listening position, then that peak wouldn't be as um, pronounced. Okay. Anyway, so the, the comment I kept getting was that it was cone breakup that was causing that. And this is a five inch driver made by Viva, pretty reputable driver maker while they were still in business. They're not doing that anymore, but it's a good driver and it's a treated paper cone. You don't get cone breakup at 3,800 Hertz on that size driver with that cone. It's much higher. In fact, it's up around 7K. So it wasn't cone breakup that was causing that little uh, bump in the response that I was trying to bring down. I, at first I assumed it was the, um, you know, the, the driver's response as a result of the baffle width. Okay. And it being open baffle because I, I need to, you know, talk about that now. What exactly happens when you put a driver in an open baffle? My baffle is eight inches wide and it has a five inch midwoofer in there. I disconnected the crossover altogether and I ran a measurement. And what you can see here is a pretty pronounced peak at around 700 Hertz. And then it slopes off as it goes up in frequency. And then it bumps back up again at around 1500 Hertz. And then after that, it like takes kind of a nose dive down into kind of a wavy valley. And then it humps up again around 5K. And the cone breakup, you can see a very strong, sharp peak at around 7,800. That's cone breakup right there. So that's what it looks like on that baffle. What happens if you make the baffle wider? I took a strip of wood that's four inches wide and I put it on one side and I ran the measurement again. And you can see that the response looks quite a bit better. First off, you can see you're getting more bass. You're getting more low end. And through the mid range, it's kind of flattened out quite a bit. That looks better. That's an improvement. What happens if you make it wider again? I added another board and I ran the measurement again. And by adding that second board, making the baffle that much wider, it now looks worse than it did before. We're getting more output down low and the dipole peak it has moved down to 400 Hertz, but there's, you know, a big null, a dip starting to form at around 1200 Hertz. And then it humps up again from there and kind of levels off. So we'll make it even wider. I added another board and ran the measurement again. And once again, it's different. We're not getting a whole lot more output down low, but through the mid range it's kind of flattening out. And for completeness, I added a fourth board to make the baffle even wider and ran the measurement again. And the mid range is flattened out even more. So that's the effect the baffle width has on your response in an open baffle speaker. You're not going to have the same issues. Well, mostly with a box speaker. This is an affliction of the open baffle and it has a name. It's called the dipole peak. And it's not just a peak, it's what happens after the peak as well. But this was my first thought when I was thinking about the problem I was having at 3800 Hertz in the original setup that I had. I just assumed that it was the woofer that was causing the problem. But yesterday I tested the tweeter on its own to look at the response there without the crossover hooked up. 
And you can see that there's a slight bump in the response centered at around 4K. And that's what was causing my little bump in the final response when I had the crossover set to 3500. Now, because the woofer has that kind of rising response up, you know, above 4K, and because this tweeter has that bump there, unless I use a notch filter, I'm not gonna be able to get this out. But I did try yesterday changing the crossover frequency from around 3000, I think it was. Yeah, it was 3000 actually. I said 3500 before, but that's wrong. It was 3500 to begin with, then I changed it to 3K. And then yesterday I experimented with 4K. And this is the response that I got on the tweeter. You can see that it pulls that bump down quite a bit. And when I did the same with the woofer or mid woofer, this is the final response that I got. I still have a bit of a bump centered at around 4K. And while it's true that our hearing is most sensitive in that you know 4K range, this is not much of a deviation. This scale is 50 decibels that I'm showing this on. So it looks worse than it actually is. And it's just gated. There's no smoothing at it. What happens if you put smoothing on there, the industry standard one third octave smoothing, this is what it looks like on a 50 decibel scale. That bump is barely noticeable. And what does it look like on an 80 decibel scale? Now back to the speaker project, the work I did yesterday on the crossover, I'm calling that good. I'm going with that. Let me cross that 4K, uh, second order on the midwoofer, second order on the tweeter. And even though I didn't, uh, you know, greatly improved on the response that I had before, I'm using a simpler crossover, second order and second order, as opposed to third order on the midwoofer and second order on the tweeter before. And my preference is always to try to cross the tweeter higher if possible. So I'm completely happy with 4K. I don't think that that's too high. You got your midwoofer that's gonna be cut off in the lower frequencies at 100 Hertz. Actually, I'm building, uh, I will be building, a active high pass filter that will cut off the lower frequencies, anything below 100 hertz that goes to this speaker so that I won't be overdriving uh, this five inch woofer, mid woofer. And that mid woofer goes up to 4K, which I think is the perfect range for it. And then the tweeter takes over from there.